There are a lot of words where Americans would drop a T sound, but Brits wouldn't. For example, this word, identify. Nine times out of 10, Americans won't say that T, identify. Brits will. Five examples of American dropping this T. That if you identify you at the right- To identify. So we were able to identify. Once you start to identify, the problem. Pretty hard to identify by their accents. Five examples of Brits pronouncing the T. I'm sure people can you know, identify with what's to identify them. It's time to identify your key messages. They identify specifically. To identify safe doses. So we have identify American and British. To identify. If you're trying to master a natural sound in American English, or you're curious about the differences between American and British pronunciation, you'll want to know this rule about T after N. What other words have a dropped T like this? When a T comes after an N before a vowel or diphthong, often Americans won't say that T at all, but most of the time Brits will. I'm going to give you lots of examples here so you'll totally understand the rule, know the exceptions, and start to build this habit. The first word we're studying is identify and also identification. Identification, again, nine times out of 10, an American speaker will drop that T sound, but a Brit won't. American English examples. There's a lot of identification of bubbles. In exchange for the use of their identification information. The identification and addressing of malware and threats. Through object identification. Self-identification comes through the autobiography. British English examples. Relies on prompt identification. The assessment and identification. It's to do with identification with the character. That to support early identification of learning difficulties. Like a form of identification as well. Identification or identification. The next one. Now, you may have noticed this because it's so common, 20. It's very uncommon for an American to say the second T, 20. You'll almost always hear it as 20. And willingly produce 20% less stuff. Good people who are trying to be part of the 21st century economy. Every 20 days. They offer 26% more money. The mainstream culture has, for 20 years, exalted. 20, 20, 20. British English, sometimes they do this, but most of the time it's 20 for them. Over 20,000 atoms. He wanted 20 of them. You might end up with 20 words at the end of the day. When I look back at the 20 years that I've worked in the arts. The next word group, wanted, wanna, and one another. Wanted. Studying speakers from the UK, I noticed they will also drop this T sometimes. Often it's a true T, wanted. Have not wanted these. I wanted to highlight. But not always. In American English, however, 99% of the time we'll drop that T, wanted. I wanted to see what a crazy person looked like. Back when I was 19, I decided I wanted to do real estate. The reason that I wanted you all to meet my, my very good friend Ken. Because I wanted to help people feel better. And he wanted to get the data. It took him three months. The first word we looked at, identify, had the NT plus vowel within the word. But this rule applies to linking words together as well. Want, another, for example, N, T, vowel. Americans will usually drop that T. One another. My guess, he'll want another helping. And who doesn't want another bridge span. I think I want another bite. Want another example of environmental injustice? You'll want another ice cream cone, you'll want another. Want, a, uh, wanna. Just like want, to, wanna. These are both examples of dropping the T after N before a vowel. I want a Coke. That's want a. I want a Coke. I want to leave now. That's want to. I want to leave now. Wanna, wanna. These two phrases sound exactly the same with this reduction. Speaking of sounds the same, the phrase we just studied, want another, sounds just like this phrase, want another, because of dropping the T. I want another donut. We have to love one another. One another, one another. I love this. Why do they sound the same? Why drop the T? Doesn't that make a word less clear? In American English, huge priority 
is given to the smoothness of sound, the flow of sound, no interruption, and linking between words. It's one of the most important characteristics of spoken English. So taking out t, a sharp sound, that stop of air with the escape, smooths it out. Removing that smooths it out. And that's how this habit came about. Think about it. The position of the N, mm, very similar to the position of T, t. Both have the front of the tongue at the roof of the mouth, mm, t. So somewhere along the way, dropping that sharp stop to smooth out the sound came about. There's another word set where it's common for Americans to drop the T, especially in conversational English, but even in more formal settings like speeches. Count on, counted, counting, counter. Counter, this is true especially in the phrase kitchen counter. For Americans, you'll almost always hear that with no T. Counter, counter, kitchen counter. I put it on the kitchen counter and just let it age. Start with printers on your bathroom counter. For British English, they will say that T. Kitchen counter? Counter, counter. Also the word count, linking into a vowel. Count on. I count on that money every month. To count on something means to need it, to rely on it, to depend on it. Say that with me. Count on. Count on. Linked smoothly to that N, no T. Here are some other examples. Counted. I counted 20. How many did you count? Counted 20, two dropped T's. Or counting. I'm counting on you. Or I'm counting on that. Disappointed, disappointing. Another word set where it's pretty common for Americans to drop the T's. Disappointed. Sure, I was disappointed I didn't get to wrestle. She was disappointed. Whoever gave you that opportunity is going to be disappointed. You're going to be continually disappointed while your work's not breaking through. They are always upset. Disappointed. Disappointed. Brits probably won't drop that T. And to feel disappointed because you're, you're not understanding. And ultimately left me feeling a little bit disappointed. I told him I'd been disappointed to learn that Garcia Marquez were out of, was out of town. She told me how disappointed she was when she got to Europe. You've left her behind. I'm very disappointed. Also disappointing. No tea a lot of the time for Americans. Other parts are disappointing and challenging. So while our results are a little disappointing, it's good to know that there's someone in the world who felt badly about disappointing the kids. I find them to be disappointing. So that has been uh, very disappointing. But usually with a tea for Brits. So two disappointing things to start with. I'm not going to dance. There's one and things, and it's obviously been very disappointing that... I hope that what you said wasn't disappointing. He's studying architecture, and I found that disappointing. The numbers are disappointing. They will show that there are... Now, there's an exception to this rule. We don't do it if there is a syllable break between N and T. Into. Entry. Antique. For example, T. Those all have that T sound. More examples of dropping the T will go more quickly here. But first, I want to tell you about a new feature here on YouTube that allows you to give a super thanks donation to the channel. This helps me know what videos you really love and appreciate, and it helps support the channel. For example, I'm currently looking to buy some new camera equipment. So give a super thanks to your favorite video of mine. I appreciate so much your support. Our next example, pointed, Pointing. I pointed out that we don't need that. Is he pointing at me? Now, this example and the ones coming up, it's less common to drop the T. Yes, you'll hear it, but maybe only about half of the time. The rest of the time, you'll hear a true T. This is different from identify or 20, where you'll almost always hear the T dropped. Printer, printing, printed. I need a new printer. I'm printing it out after work. I printed it already. Paint, followed by a word that begins with a vowel or diphthong. Also painted and painting. Paint it. I'm gonna paint it pink. Paint it. What a beautiful painting. Or we're having our house painted when we're on vacation. Rented, renting. I rented a car for vacation. Do they own their home? No, they're renting. This is also common with inter-words. For example, internet, international, 
interview, the internet is down. She's studying international affairs. I have a job interview next week. Accounting accounted. The accounting office is closed. Everything's accounted for. What do you think? Do you like this rule? Do you hate it? Have you noticed other words? My boys are going to the dentist next week and I noticed myself dropping that T, dentist. Can you think of another situation that follows this rule of NT plus a vowel or diphthong where the T can be dropped? Or an example you've heard and noticed? Put it in the comments below. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe with notifications on for your next English lesson. In the meantime, keep your learning going with this video. I love being your English teacher. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.